Hey, hey, Tony Gaston here. <sighs> Y'all gotta forgive me now. I'm driving, so can't look at you. But wanting to talk to you about this here and help you understand, like, the red pill community, what they call it, you know, even uh, MIG, TOW, MG, TOW, men going their own way. The Manosphere, I really don't know what that is, but I think it's the same thing. I'm going to tell you something, and a, a lot of this is is very similar to, unfortunately, some of the men who joined the Greek life in college. Now, not all of them will put that. I know some of them personally, some of the Greek life personally, but some of them who join it is the same type of men that is in this here MGTOW, Red Pill, and I'm gonna tell you, it's it's a type of man that wanna be. It's a type of man that has not been affirmed by a man. It's a man who did not have a good relationship with his father. It's a man who, and if not his father, did not have a re good relationship with another man, like a, a coach or a brother or like an older man that he could look up to and respect and feel respected by, feel loved by. And so these men use women as a point to connect, but really what they want is the affection and the camaraderie and the company of other men. And in order to have that and not feel like gay men they have to berate women and talk down on women. Now, these men, typically these men are men who were overlooked by women growing up. They can be a, a handsome man as an adult. They could be muscular. They could be you know, whatever a woman might desire. Some of the men could be those things, but it's based on their developmental years, their adolescent years. If you see a man as a woman over here in this community that's kind of bashing women or, you know, just talking, just really trying to hold women accountable versus men holding men accountable. A lot of those men is the LDE. How y'all be talking about the BDE? They the LDE. And I don't like the word, I don't like the term. That's what y'all came up with, y'all music artists and stuff. But a lot of these men, what I have been told by some women is some of these men that's over six foot tall got them a one incher, two incher, three incher. And that'll mess a man up. I, I just could not imagine the the distraughtability that I would feel living that life, you know, cause I, I, I just couldn't imagine just, you know, getting, just finding the strength to get out the bed in the morning. It's hard. That would be extremely hard. And so I, I just really, so it's like, I see these men as when I see him, I see him as a little boy in a grown man body with a teddy bear in their lap while they shooting their videos and doing their podcasts. They, I just, I see them like they go home and they got a bunch of stuffies, you know, just they got stuffed dogs, stuffed bears, just all throughout the house and stuff. And if not, then they, they got all kind of other stuff you know, adult nasty stuff that's trying to make them feel like a man. But this is a very, this is a very sad man. And sad being the, the root word of sadistic, maybe. So these men, a lot of them are sad and sadistic. And, but it comes from being overlooked. It comes from being mistreated by women. It comes from being bullied by the tough guys and the jocks in school. You rarely will see a man that's openly and willingly in this community 
some men believe like this but they not a part of the community but typically the men who believe like this again who were cool and athletic and had a bunch of ladies they still can believe like the red pill community because they did not have a relationship with their father these men are fatherless and even the ones who had a father had a father in the home their father was not really a man to them that they could respect and confide in and talk to because one thing about a real man and i learned this in the most in the weirdest of ways i learned this and then i saw it to be true over and over and over again my sister had this boyfriend who he was my age and we grew up together playing football but we weren't like close or nothing but him and he had two other brothers that i knew and we all played football and the oldest brother was real good at football. He died early as from like a heart attack or something. <clears throat> and then it was the brother my age. And then my sister boyfriend, he was younger than me, maybe a year, maybe a year or two. Well, <clears throat> they was fighters. You know, they was fighters. This, this, these brothers, you know, they never lost a fight. You know, they never lost a fight. And one thing my sister told me, she was like, she like, yeah, she, she moved out the house when she was like 16 and moved in with him. And she told me that him and her sleep on the couch every night and she sleep on top of him. And just that first alone, hearing that alone, I'm like, this a different type of dude. Like, ain't no woman sleeping on top of me. I, I just don't have that level of emotional, mental intelligence. Like, I, there is no possible way. I sleep with my back to my wife and then all the people try to tell you oh, the relationship gonna break up and that do not mean that that's how i try to tell you people people be making up these stuff and ain't even married ain't even sniff no rain and so listen to me and then my sister told me she say he has never once put his hands on me or like tried to bow up at me or get bad at me now mind you at this particular time where we from, every woman got beat on. Every woman got choked. Every woman, that was it was the most normal thing. There was no such thing as a relationship without domestic violence where we from. It was really no such thing. It would be like literally like you lucky if one out of a hundred did not have physical violence in it. And yes, that's sad, but it's very real. And so here was this thing. And then... She, when she said that, I was just like, man, this dude fights every day. Like, he in the street fighting every day. Like, they jump my cousin. You know, they beat the brakes off my cousin. And they fight every day. And they was robbers. So they robbed houses. They robbed stores. They, they were jike boys. He did 15 years in prison for it. But when she told me he never once jumped bad with her, that's when I realized that's what a real man is this man will go against the world he will face the whole world he will confront the world and he will fight any man toe to toe squared up don't matter their size don't matter nothing and he has never lost a fight this man was like a hundred and oh in the streets going toe to toe with men he was the only man i know that never ever was reported to have lost a fight but never once tried to be bad with a woman or at least with my sister and i was like man and that's what i that's what i know about men when you become a real man you no longer looking down on women when you become a real man, you no longer arguing with women. When you become a real man, you no longer looking for the advantage over a woman. When you become a real man, you're not pointing the blame at a woman. When you become a real man, you accept 100% responsibility for your life, for your relationship, for your economy, for your country, for your world. 
when you become a man, there is no blame shifting. There is no victim blaming. There is no pointing the blame. When you become a man, you are 100% responsible. If your woman cheat on you, you hold yourself responsible for choosing her. If your woman can't be trusted, if your woman is anything wrong with her, you ask yourself, what can I do to impact and to change her life for the better? See, when you become a real man, you shoulder the burden. You carry the load. You carry the boats. You carry the water. You chop the wood. You stop making excuses. And you start making changes. And you're not giving to her mood swings. You're going to call shots that need to be called for your household. And when she don't understand it, she don't get it. You don't berate her. You don't talk down to her. You stand on what you know you got to do under God. And you pray that she understand and she see your heart as the head of the household, as the leader of your household. But you don't care to control her or to force her to see your vision because you know who called you and who sent you. And you know you're doing what's best for your household and you do so in strength and in confidence without verbal abuse, without physical abuse, abuse, without physical, uh, emotional abuse without social abuse, without financial abuse. You do so from a place of confidence, from a place of strength. When you become a real man, you don't have to control a woman. You don't have to dictate. You don't have to belittle, degrade, demean, manipulate, deceive, lie, cheat. When you become a real man, you can express yourself to a woman. And if your woman can't hear you, you could show her through demonstration by letting her know that you refuse to be disrespected and you will walk away. You're not going to yell at her. You're not going to curse at her. You will walk away and you will leave her to learn as an adult and to grow as an adult, if she is unwilling to grow, if she's unwilling to change for the better, you will show her by example that she will lose every good thing in her life if she does not grow and change. But you will not call her out her name. You will not curse her out. You will not raise your voice at her. You will not try to force her physically or emotionally or spiritually to fall in line and to do and to be what you want her to do and be. You will demonstrate and you will stand on business as a man in strength and in confidence, in stoicism. But a real man does not blame a woman for his mishaps in his life. A real man does not compete with a woman. A real man does not argue and belittle and debate and go back and forth with a woman. A real man knows who he is, knows what he wants, and he gives, he sacrifices, he leads in love, meaning he bends over backwards and he shows love before expecting to receive the same in return. The red pill, the mint towel, these men with these podcasts that's arguing and debating with women. Oh, what a woman is. Oh, what a woman that. These are not men. These are boys. They don't know a man and they don't know what it is to be a man. And that's why they have picked a fight 
with a woman instead of with the man in the mirror. Hey, this is Tony Gaskin. God bless you. We'll talk soon.